Uh, I'm Sunway, uh, for those who, who just came in. Yep, uh, once again, I'm Sunway. I'm the Hong Kong New Student Ambassadors for this year. And I'm currently studying quantitative finance um, this year. And I'm currently year two. And just some few fun facts about myself. So I'm from Malaysia. And if you're familiar with Malaysians, we actually speak uh, quite, quite a lot of languages. And yep, I can speak English, Cantonese, Mandarin, and Malay. So yeah, pretty much uh, any language that you, know, you might face in Hong Kong. Uh, another thing, if you guys have uh, looked through, uh, you know, like in Hong Kong, there's something called residential halls. I'm not in it. And uh, if you guys are not, uh, uh, just a, another thing, uh, if you guys are interested on my CGPA, uh, it's on the screen there. Uh, it's a monkey out of 4.3. Yeah, so just to let you know, in Hong Kong, it's a bit different where CGPA is 4.3. Um, but in other countries, it's four. Yeah, uh, so I'll just keep my CGPA as a secret for now. Okay, so let's move on. Yep, uh, so for my sharing, I'll be focusing more on, you know, uh, quantitative finance, the course that is considerably quite unique in FBE. And yep, so I'll just dive right in. So in this slide, you can see the curriculum of study of quantifying. And I don't want to go into a very detail, but uh, there'll be like some common things such as number one, common core courses, number two, language courses, and number three, uh, faculty core courses, which is in yellow. Yeah, so these um, courses will be actually explained by other student ambassadors later, so I won't dive into the details. But uh, just, I would like to highlight two things. Uh, so firstly is the ones that is bolded. So you have uh, quantifying core courses and quantifying disciplinary elective. So if you can see the purple color and the purple color and the red color thing. Uh, so you can see from the purple color, there's like math, there's like finance, there's like programming, there's like uh, mathematical finance. So without going into much details, uh, I'll just explain like, you know, as in, in general, if you want details, you can look it up online. But in general, quantifying is basically mathematics plus finance. And that with that, it means that, you know, you're studying finance, but you will add more mathematical sense to it. Like, how do you actually derive things in finance mathematically? And that's quantify. Yeah. Uh, if you want details, you can look it up online, you know, there's description in there. But yeah, let's not waste too much time here. Uh, and another thing to highlight is that, you know, as a quantify major, you will take um, 96, credit, uh, 96 credits, which is equivalent to 16 courses. Uh, if you don't know what that means, it's okay. Uh, just, you know, like a significant thing is that compared to a finance major, uh, it's 72 credits, that means you'll be studying something less in a regular finance major. And that just shows that, you know, quantify is a major that, you know, it adds on to a regular finance major. And, you know, it, it is, they, they say it harder and from the admission numbers, you can see that it's quite of a privilege to, to be in. And yeah, so I'm grateful that I can get in. And if you guys are considering this course, uh, yeah, just do expect, you know, you're learning something more and you know, you're learning something and, uh, and more challenging. Yeah. So uh, just to let you know, uh, on the top right, you can see like uh, the first one and the third one, they are called capstone courses, which it means like to graduate, you need to study that. Uh, so, if you want to know what that is, uh, I can't go into details now. I uh, just Google search financial engineering and you know, there's tons of articles to talk about what it is as an intro. And you know, uh, something in the middle, the second one is what you call quantifying disciplinary elective. So you can choose anything you like, but within the quantifying kind of range. Uh, yeah, when, when you get in, you know. And one more thing, last thing is before I go to the next slide, you can see that 
you know, there's something called free electives and it's highlighted in blue. And you see in the majority in, you know, year three and year four. You know, year four is basically everything. And why is it so is uh, the thing that I'm going to go next. So free electives, you can study like 15 courses. Uh, is required actually. And so with that, you mean, it means that you can pursue like, you know, basically anything you like or you want. So uh, there's a picture on the right, you know, you can pursue like anything in those uh, faculties or, you know, disciplines, whatever, you know, you can just choose anything. And why does Quant Fi have so many free electives, you know, compared to perhaps other courses like, uh, I don't know, engineering, you know, like uh, a and and so on. Uh, is because that, you know, like I said earlier, Quant Fi has more, is more hectic in general than a regular finance major. So, you know, you, they, in return, uh, they design it so that, you know, we can choose something else. Uh, using our interests, you know, it's more relaxing or, you know, you might want to take courses that you, you are confident to get high grades and boost your CGPA. Uh, but, well, that is the realistic part. Uh, the intended part is that, you know, the second point, you can equip Quantify with a related major, so like it kind of reinforces each other. So you have maths, computer science and stats, for example, that's more. And also, um, as I mentioned earlier, it's, sent, it's basically very focused in year three and year four. That means it gives you more flexibility to like juggle around so that, you know, when, you come, when it comes to internship or, you know, job hunting, uh, it will be like better for you. And there are other things exclusive to Quantify, uh, such as, you know, Quantify mentorship, uh, you know, buddy system, stuff like that. And there's also like various events that is exclusive to our, our course. So there's like, you know, uh, some talks, you know, from someone working in the industry of Quantify. Uh, networking events and also like you know various training programs we have like as the screen shows Bloomberg terminal courses you know and one more would be like trading courses by uh, Amplify or other companies you know so on and so forth uh, you you get to you get exposed to them you know you naturally know the when the opportunity comes if you get into my course yeah so just to let you know that there's these things uh, okay, so based, like all courses, we have exchange and uh, the, the picture just shows basically everything that you need to know and you have to know uh, there. So you can just type FBE uh, HKU exchange, it, it will come up. Yeah. So you can see there's uh, literally any country that you want, you know, you can go anywhere and how you apply is via email. So that's when you get in, you'll know. Uh, and the grading criteria, just to let you know, uh, it's, you can see from there, it's CGPA based. Yeah, so basically you, you get better grades, you know, get above three, you can go, you, you can basically go the uni that you want without worrying about, you know, being the quota problem or whatever. Yeah. And so my experience is that, you know, I'm year two now and I'll be going on exchange on next year, January to May in uh, Uni of Toronto at Canada. And so, you know, without going to the details, you know, uh, one advice is to, you know, research or, you know, just think about what country you want to go early because when the time comes, you know, when you're busy with assignments and all, uh, you just suddenly struck like the, the application will just be open and closed and then you won't have time to prepare. So yeah, so basically you have to research on the course, you know, what are the courses you want to transfer uh, and stuff like that. And yeah, and you know, which country you want to visit, that's very important. And yeah, uh, if you want more info, just Google search HKU FBE Exchange and you'll get this web page. Next slide. Uh, okay, uh, yeah. So, for Quantify, uh, or maybe in general, uh, the career aspects is that, you know, we have regular career and recruitment talks. We have, uh, you know, networking events, as mentioned earlier. 
uh, there's mass emails that you don't know, notify you of all the jobs available, uh, literally all, all of them. And you know, that's uh, for our faculty, you're lucky because you know, we have this thing called FBCDT. The full name is on the bottom right corner. Yeah, so they basically compile all the job opportunities, uh, enrichment programs, events, all of that, you know, in this web page, you know. It, it's very nice for them to do that. And yeah, you know, that's where, you know, you can find a lot of the career info and prospects and opportunities um, from the uni, okay? So of course you can find them yourself, but yeah, all these are the opportunities that the uni and faculty provides. And yep, like I said, I'll dive more specific into Quan Fai. So uh, the first point, pretty much everything, because Quan Fai is basically, you know, an add-on to a regular finance so it's like you gain an additional skill, uh, but, but you know, you're challenged to actually gain it. Yeah, so after you graduate, you can do what regular finance people do. Uh, and you know, there's like opportunities that you find it easier. It doesn't mean that a regular finance student couldn't take this job, but as a quantified student, you're more prepared for these jobs. So what are these jobs? Uh, you know, that's like risk management, finance engineering, as I mentioned earlier, wealth management, and uh, all Quantvine students dream at some point, you know, is going into investment banking, you know, trading, uh, or other things like, you know, private equity, uh, uh, what do you call it, hedge funds, you know. And like, you know, if you heard of these big names, you know, JP Morgan, Goldman Sachs, you know, that's where, you know, everyone would like to go and, you know, have the sky high salary, you know, achieving your dream or whatever. Yeah, but, you know, uh, that's, of course, tough, but, you know, I mean, just to let you know, that's this thing that you can look into. And, yeah, uh, my experience is that I have been in a part-time internship through the mass emails that, you know, Hong Kong you send. And it's from a branding firm. So it belongs to a business consulting category. So you see, like I said, you can join pretty much anything. Uh, yeah, and so I joined a branding firm and you know, I did like finance and admin kind of jobs. And uh, my takeaway is that, you know, you get to learn about the startup world and even in year one, you know, you can already get hands-on experience on how businesses actually work, like their finance needs and as a branding firm, how they do branding, how they actually consult their uh, clients on, you know, you know, brand, logo, whatever, and stuff like that. And so my experience is just tell you that, you know, there's plenty of opportunities. Don't feel like if you're, even if you're not quite fine, you're, you're like a bit compromised. So from startup to large corporations, there's full of chances, but you know, at the end of the day, it's still, you have to make the effort to grab it. But yeah, chances is there. And that's about the career prospects. And yeah, um, and that's all from me. Thank you. And if you'd like to, you know, uh, chat with me more, uh, here's my contact details. Um, yeah, and that's all from me. Thank you. Thank you, Sun Wei. And next, we're going to have Shruti to present her experience as an EIF student. Shruti, can we have you? Yeah. Hi. Um, so my name is Shruti and uh, I'm just going to share my screen. Um, can you guys see it? Yeah, now we can see it. Thank you. Um, so I want to introduce myself first. Um, I'm from India, and I'm a second year student at HKU. Uh, I'm majoring in economics and finance, and I'm doing two minors in politics and French. Uh, so just like in Malaysia and India as well, we speak quite a few languages. So I speak English, Hindi, French, and Bengali, and I studied the IB program in high school. Um, so, so this is roughly what the program structure looks like for economics and finance, although it does change um, slightly every single year. So you might want to check this year's uh, before coming. So we have uh, several types of courses. We have introductory courses, which everybody takes. Um, 
like for the entire faculty. And then we have advanced level courses. So, so some of the courses that you guys will all be taking are uh, financial accounting uh, and uh, introductory micro and macroeconomics and corporate finance. And all of these, they just give you like a base to kind of build upon. Uh, and then you can take uh, a number of electives in economics and finance to kind of uh, specialize in like a certain area or to like diversify your interests or, or to just learn about certain parts that might interest you more. So for me, um, there are some courses that I find really interesting. Um, and yeah, so one of them is um, Games and Decisions. So this basically covers game theory and the Nash equilibrium and things like that. Uh, and then current economic affairs is uh, kind of a research-based course uh, based on current economic affairs. And it's really interesting because it lets you apply uh, theoretical knowledge to like the real world situations. Uh, and then there's uncertainty in information, which, uh, which teaches you about how people make choices about what to buy and what not to buy. Um, and then there's entrepreneurial finance, which is really interesting because it teaches you everything from uh, how to pitch to investors, how to raise funding, and it covers the course from both the point of view of someone with a startup, as well as from the point of view of someone who is trying to invest in something. So it's really interesting to see like both, both points of view. Um, and finally, there's green finance and impact investing, which, uh, which tackles finance from the point of view of the environment and how we can use investing to, for the betterment of the environment. So these are just some really interesting courses. Um, so I just wanted to like show this to you to explain how you can really tailor your experience here at HKU. There are some mandatory courses, but for the most part, you get to decide what you want to study. Um, apart from studying, there's also some very interesting non-academic programs. Uh, the first one is the business consulting practicum, uh, where you basically, um, it takes place over the summer and it, it has six credits, which is the same as a regular course in HKU. And you work as an independent consultant for uh, enterprises and you get to uh, make project reports and do marketing and just um, yeah, gain these real like soft skills that will help you later on when you're entering the job market. Uh, and then you have social venture management uh, where you work with um, these uh, social enterprises and it, it gives you a very different outlook on like something apart from the corporate world. So it helps you like broaden your skill range. Uh, and then HQ offers a very large variety of case competitions. Uh, one of them is Accenture and these case competitions, they help you um, think analytically and strategically and uh, teach you problem solving skills, which are all really important. Um, so yeah, these are some programs that HKU offers to kind of help you um, develop your skills. Uh, and then this is one course that I went for that I really enjoyed. Uh, it's called China and the Business Economy and it takes place in Shanghai. So it's a 10 day course uh, during the spring break, uh, the reading week we call it. Um, and uh, we basically went to Shanghai, uh, all expenses paid. Uh, they paid for literally everything. Uh, and it was for 10 days and we studied about the nitty gritties of the Chinese economy and how to do business there. And we got to hear um, like from, from industry leaders in China. Uh, one of my favorite ones was the one you can see over here to, um, to the right. Um, it's, he, this man is from uh, EA. So like uh, he's like the guy who created like Plants vs. Zombies, which is a game I really like to play. So it was really interesting to see how they adapt different uh, video games to, to suit the Chinese market. Um, and yeah, so we went on for, for like uh, tourism and it was a lot of fun. Um, also exchange is something that a lot of people have questions about. So in HKU, um, like Sunway said, we have a lot of uh, exchange partners. So for me, I really wanted to go on exchange because I think it would help me decide um, wh whether I want to go to graduate school or whether I want to work because I think that having an academic experience in a different university is really important because it, it gives you an idea of what it would be like to w work as an academic, to work as a researcher. Um, and also, I also wanted to go to exchange because I love to travel and I really want to explore Europe. So uh, I'll be going to Sweden um, to L Lund University. Um, I'll be going next year 
uh, in January. So I'm really excited about that. Uh, and you don't have to worry about exchange right now because you apply in your second year and HQ will give you a lot of resources, a lot of, a lot of events to help you decide where to apply and how to apply and things like that. Um, and after you graduate, you, you'll really have two main options. You can go, you can uh, look for employment uh, and HQ will help you with that. Uh, FP will help you with that. So we have career workshops, we have uh, job, job boards, uh, we have uh, resume like refining sessions. We have recruitment fairs. Uh, so we have things like that. Uh, and you can go into a bunch of careers. You can become an analyst or a consultant um, or an economist or an investment banker or a researcher or you can go into policy making. So it's, uh, it's economics and finance is like a very general kind of degree. You can really go into anything from there. Um, and of course, you could also go into graduate school. Um, but I don't really know much about that because I'm only in my second year. So yeah, I think you can just uh, research on this on your own. Um, so when you're choosing your courses, you should keep a number of things in mind. Uh, you should, first of all, keep in mind your program requirements because you need to meet the requirements to graduate. But at the same time, you should also choose things that interest you because if you don't like it, you're not gonna do well at it and your CGPA will reflect that. Um, but if you're still having trouble, you can talk to people around you, you can talk to your faculty academic advisors. You can talk to your resident academic advisors at your hall. Uh, you can also talk to your friends or, your senior, or the students who are senior to you uh, for guidance. Um, and yeah, so now I wanna talk about like the more like daily, daily life aspects of studying at HKU. So for me, I live in a hall, uh, it's called Lapchi College. Um, and I think it's the best hall in HKU because we really have a very strong, strong sense of community there. Um, and we have these things called high table dinners, which are basically gigantic Harry Potter style dinners that take place in a, in a auditorium and you have to wear like these robe things and there's like um, really fancy food and there's music and yeah, it's, it's a really interesting experience and it usually happens once or twice a month. Um, and the rooms in uh, electric College are pretty nice as well. So this picture right here is my room um, and it's, it's very like clean and safe and inviting environment to live in. Um, and there's a lot of activities at, at the halls as well. Um, but it really differs from hall to hall. Um, and then at HKU, we have a number of student clubs. Um, you will find a club for literally anything you, you can think of. And if it doesn't exist, you can always make your own club. So some of the most famous clubs are uh, ISEC and um, the South Asian Society, like amongst the Indians at least. I'm, I'm Indian. so. Uh, but you also have things, um, clubs for uh, tennis and archery and linguistics and music and art. Um, so almost anything. Um, and yeah, so I'm a vegetarian and uh, some people are very concerned about finding vegetarian food in Hong Kong. But it's actually not that hard at all. Like inside campus, we have a number of vegetarian options. We have Vijas, which serves um, like Chinese food. We have Ebenezer's, which serves... Um, like falafels and Indian food. And we have, um, uh, we have Starbucks, which has lots of vegetarian options as well. And we have like burgers and we have like a lot of options. Um, but if you leave campus, like that's where it really starts to get interesting because there, there's such a wide variety of options available to you. Like you can go for Spanish food, uh, you can go for like pizza, you can have Indian food and Korean food and Vietnamese food and Malaysian food and, uh, obviously Chinese food. So you're spoiled for choice. And a lot of the eateries around HKU are very reasonably priced. And they, they often have like student discounts and stuff which you can use, which are really like helpful. Um, and yeah, so when you're not in university and when you have free time, which you will during like the start of every semester, you have a bunch of free time. So there's a lot of things you can do in Hong Kong. You, if you like, uh, if you like to party, you can go to Lang Kwai Fong or uh, Wan Chai, which are both like party districts. Um, it's a lot of fun. Um, or you could also go to, uh, if you like amusement parks, we have two main amusement parks here in Hong Kong. We have Disneyland and we have Ocean Park, which are both a lot of fun. You can go with your friends, make a day of it. Um, if you're more into nature, um, again, Hong Kong has a lot of options for nature lovers. We have really cool beaches uh, with like clear waters and sand. It's very like, 
cool and tropical looking. Um, we also have a lot of hiking trails. So uh, this one here that you see is called Lion's Rock. It's one of the most famous hiking trails in Hong Kong. Um, and this, uh, the hiking trails in Hong Kong uh, have like a very wide range of like difficulty levels. So even if you're like a beginner, you don't have to, you can still try. It's a lot of fun. Um, and uh, you can always uh, go sit by the harbor, which is like a pretty popular activity among students. You're going to the harbor and just kind of uh, chilling there. And uh, you can, if you have time on the weekend, there's a lot of um, islands near Hong Kong, so you could always go there. Uh, they're called like you have uh, Chang Chao, you have Feng Chao, Lama Island. So they're all like a lot of like they're very touristy and fun places to go. Uh, you could also go to Macau, um, I guess. Um, but yeah, so that was my presentation. Um, yeah. Okay, um, I yeah. Yeah, you go on, Shirti. Okay, I think Shirti has finished her part of the presentation and shows everyone that we have very wonderful life in Hong Kong. You're not just studying. And um, now we are going to have Ankush. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Ankush. Uh, can you guys hear me? Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah. So one second, I'll just share my screen. Yeah, so hello everyone. I'm Ankesh Kumar. So currently I'm an year three student and I'm studying BB accounting and finance. So I belong from Pakistan and I can speak three languages. So that's all about me and I'll now move on to the uh, program outline of accounting and finance. So basically like, like, the accounting and finance program consists of a major in accounting and a minor in finance. Like this is like pretty like confusing because like at first I thought that it's accounting like double major, but it's actually a major minor. So after that, I'll go through the breakup of the course, which consists of like some UG5 requirements, which is compulsory for everyone. So under that, you have to like select six common core courses, which is equivalent to 36 credit. And you have like some language requirements, which include English and uh, Chinese. And moreover, you, after that, you have to like select compulsory accounting courses out of which like the professional code and accounting are 84 credits. And then like you have to also select some, some BBA courses, including the capstone course for the degree. And lastly, you have like a minor, a minor in finance, which is like for which you have to select six courses. And lastly, uh, you have to like select some free electives to graduate, which is like equivalent to 42 credits. So like for me, I'm in, like, I'm a major in accounting and in finance. So I have like used these 36 like free electives to like declare my major instead of a minor. And on this, like on the screen, you can also see some of my courses, which I have selected. Uh, so you can see that like I have selected various courses, like some in accounting, some in business, uh, common core courses, some marketing courses and economics courses as well. So this helped me to, to like explore more career options and like more opportunities which are available in the university. So moving on to the university residents, the university residents consist of like two sections like residential halls and residential colleges. So under like we have 13 residential halls and uh, like two of them are available on campus. Two are like very close to the campus or are like close to the like sports center if you're like uh, like an athletic person. And like five of them are a little far but they are like easily accessible through public transport. And so the residential colleges are like, like in, located in one specific area, Kennedy Town but that's also not far. And like, if you make a comparison of these two, I would say that like the residential colleges are new and they are like one of the best residential halls you can ever stay in, but they are more expensive as compared to the residential halls. And moreover, they are highly competitive. Okay, so like, I know like people are really confused on which residents to choose. So like, 
I have made some pointers to reflect on like how to make a decision for residents. So like the five questions which you should ask yourself are like overall convenience. If you really want to stay on campus or close to campus and some, some meal requirements and some, some, some of the halls are like really competitive. So if you really want to stay for four years or you want to like move out after like one or two years and stay in, stay in, a, stay in an apartment. And lastly, your willingness to like contribute to different extracurricular activities. So now I've like made a description about like about what ha like where I live and what I've done. So I currently live in Valon Hall. Uh, so it's a little bit far from the university, but it's accessible through public transport. And so firstly, I'll go through readmission. For readmission, like our hall is based on like high level dinner attendance, extracurricular activities, and your behavior and your overall behavior in the hall. So these are like quite important factors if you wanna like, recon if you wanna consider living in a hall for like four years. So about my social life, like it's, it's really fun like meeting new people every time. And like, it's actually a wonderful time in spending in a hall with my like, with my friends and enjoying a lot. So every month there are high table dinners held. So these are traditional dinners. Uh, which like reflect the culture of like our halls and the university. So these are like a really good way to interact with each other and like have a good time with each other. Lastly, I have also like I'm a member of the football team. So so my teammates are really interactive as you can see in the picture. And we also have like regular practice sessions. So you really need to be active in those practice sessions. Otherwise. Otherwise it can be a little bit difficult to get a readmission. So you have to be careful about that. So moving on to the, moving on to the FB enrichment programs. So FB provides three programs for, for like finance majors, specifically for finance majors. So firstly is the connectivity in finance, which is eligible to like freshmen, year one students. And out of that, you can like try to gain fundamental business and some financial knowledge because, you know, in year one, you're not, not really aware about like about what finance is and how you can like opt in to secure a job. So it consists of some firm visits such as like Fidelity International, which is like an investment management firm, uh, Bank Julius, which is a Swiss bank. And lastly, Lee, you can also like, if you are interested in sales and trading, as my as my teammate mentioned, uh, you can like, you can gain, gain this opportunity to go through amplified trading simulation, which is a different like simulation and you can learn more. Secondly, you have, we have HKU Accenture Business Consulting Program. So this is like more related towards if you are interested towards consulting and it tells you about like re how to solve real life, uh, real life scenarios and like what are the current trends in the market. So under this program, you are like, there will be regular, some regular classes, training sessions and a case competition. And lastly, you will also like have a possibility of getting an internship under these because like some, some of the students are just outstanding and this, and they don't want to waste like special talents. So lastly, we have the asset management corporate series. It's for like, year two and year three students. And like, if you are really interested in the asset management industry, so this is the best option you can consider. There, under this, like under this program, there are uh, three company sessions from different, different asset management companies, such as like Private Technologies, Value Partners, CSOP. And lastly, you have to do a project to like finish off, uh, finish this uh, series. And, and if you're like, if you're really good at this, it's similar to Accenture. If you're really good at this, then you will have some possible internship opportunities. Okay, so other extracurricular programs include like different societies, clubs, or organizations. So I've divided this into three categories. Uh, so it's easier for you to understand. So firstly, it's the general category. So in the general category, it's just like basic, 
like category for example like hku student ambassador scheme which is like which is eligible for everyone to join and like it will help you to represent our university at different places like for example like right now i am representing 